Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part three of my Fahrenheit Celsius Kelvin video series. No, no, not that Kelvin. No, get it off of there. Anyways, like I was saying, this is part three. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, go watch those right now. They're down below. You'll find links. You go click on them and then come on back. All right, so in part two, we left off. We had just built our query. We got all the calculations in here. So now anybody can come in here and type in, you know, 200 degrees Celsius. And there's your conversions right there. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead now. And we're going to build a form off of this. So the user, all the user has to do is type in a value and then pick from the list, pick from a combo box, what scale they want. All right, I'm going to use my continuous F. That's one of the blank forms that are in here. All right, it's a basic continuous form. If you want to learn how I built that, go watch my blank uh, database template video. You'll find a link to that down below as well. I'm just going to copy and paste that. Control C, Control V. We'll call this my reading F, my reading form. No, we're not reading stuff. It's just for readings, our temperature readings. And I keep a couple of blank objects in here just so I have the formatting. I don't have to redo all the formatting all the time. All right, let's open up the properties for the form. We're going to set under data. We're going to set the record source to the reading Q. Why the Q? Well, we talked about this in the original Fahrenheit to Celsius video sum. The query has the calculations in it, so we don't have to redo them in the form, right? They're just done once in the query. That's the benefit of doing it in the query. All right, and now I can come in here and go add existing fields. There they are. We're gonna pick them all. Click on the first one, shift, click on the last one, click and drag and drop them all right about there in the detail section. Boom, okay? Why'd I put them there? Well, you're going to see in just a second. First thing I'm going to do is copy my formatting. So I'm going to click on one of these labels up here. I'm going to go to the home tab and find the format painter. I put it up here on the quick launch bar so I can use that one. Double click on it to make it stick. It's going to stick on now until you turn it off. I can go click, 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 click. And set all those to white and then turn it off, right? All right, and I want to make all of the calculated fields and the fields you can't change gray. That's why I got this guy sitting there. So again, double click, and then I'm going to go click, 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 right? All the stuff the user can't change, the calculated fields and the ID are now gray. And that's just for readability. That's just something I like to do. It makes your forms pretty, right? It's always good to have pretty forms, so that it makes it easier for the users to use. All right, I'm going to delete these, right? Right in the ruler bar there, click, drag. Okay, we can slide all of this stuff over to the left. And now I'm going to apply a layout, but I only use layouts to arrange stuff for me. And then I turn the layout off because I don't like layouts. But if you go up to arrange, okay, and then pick tabular, look at that. It arranges them nicely for you, but it puts this layout box around them. And I really hate that. So I'm going to go remove layout. See, and it just arranges all the boxes nice for me and I turned off the layout so I don't have to deal with the layout. I got a whole separate video on layouts and I don't like them. Okay, let me close that. And now I'll just take a few seconds and we'll just move this stuff over. Move that over to the left. We'll slide this stuff up like this and like that. Okay, good enough for now. I like to put on my finishing touches when I'm done with the form. I just right now want to get it functional. Okay, save it, close it. Let's open it back up again. Looks pretty good. Now, whether or not you left align stuff or right align stuff, that's kind of up to you. I like left aligning everything. I know, I know it doesn't line stuff up right with the, with the minus signs and stuff, but that's just my personal preference. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select all of those things, go to format and align left. My personal preference, if you don't like it, do whatever you want. They're your Legos. You put them together however you like. Okay. Next up, let's make a value list combo box for this guy. It's one of those things I told you prerequisite for in the first class. I don't always know exactly what part or how many parts my videos are going to have until I start going. So I always put the prerequisites up front if I remember to. So let's delete the temperature scale text box. And we're going to replace that with a value list combo box, right? Drop this down, find a combo box, this guy right there. Click right, meow. Okay, I'm going to type in the values that I want. We're going to give it a short list of things, F, C, and K, right? Um, like I said in the first video, you could make a table out of it if you really wanted to, and that's where you'd pick the first option, but a value list is just fine for this because we're literally storing an F, C, and a K in the table. All right, next, what do you want? I'm going to go with two columns 
because when the box drops down, when the box is open, I'm going to show them the name. So it's going to be F and then Fahrenheit. F A H R E N H E I T. That's one of those tough words to spell. But you know what's always harder is I always have a hard time spelling Celsius. I always try to put an extra C in it. There's only one C, right? Celsius. C E L S I U S. I always think that there's a C here, but there isn't. And it's one of those words where I always see it once I've spelled it and I know it's wrong and then I got to change it. I always get it wrong the first time. And then Kelvin, no, that's easy. Okay. We're going to drag that column like that so that's what it looks like. And it'll see that when it's open. Hit next. All right. Now, what's the bound field? Well, that's going to be column one, the F, C, or K, right? Next. We're going to store that value in what field? That's the scale, the temperature scale. Okay. All right. Next. What label do you want? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways and hit finish. And there we go. All right. There's the label that came in with it. Delete that sucker. Slide this up into here. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to make sure we give this guy a name. So double click on it. This is another one of my things for the list for the dev team. I hate the fact that it doesn't give it a good name. It's combo 90. I, I would name it the same thing as the control source. That's just me. So if you make a combo box and you bind it to a field called temp scale, name the box temp scale. But that's that's me. That's just my thing. Or temp scale combo or something. Combo 60 isn't very helpful. Now what I'm also going to do is if we save this and close it and open it back up again. All right. Looks good. All right. If I go tab, tab. Okay. It jumps over temp scale and it jumps over here. And I don't even want it to tab to these because you can't type over them anyways. Right. Tab. And it goes back to that one. Why? Because this combo box was added last. So it's at the end of the tab order. So we're going to adjust our tab order and we're going to take the things out of the tab order that we don't want to be able to tab to. We really only need to tab to this, then to this, and then go to the next one, right? So we're going to select all of these. We're going to go to tab order, hit auto, and it fixes it, puts the scale in the right spot. Hit OK. All right. Then we're going to highlight just the gray ones. Click, shift, click, click, click. We're going to go to other, and we're going to set tab stop to no. Save it, close it, open it, and now notice your tab starts there, and when you tab, it just goes between those two fields. Okay. All right, now I like to pull all this stuff together and make it smaller so it's not the fields aren't quite so big, so that's just really taking just a minute. And there really isn't a good tool for this. You just kind of kind of just do it your do it by eye. It'd be nice if there was a better tool for this, but there really isn't. And you can change these things, these labels up here too, like like ID, right? Temp, um, scale is fine. And this I would just have C, F, and K. And then slide these this like this. Temperature probably doesn't need to be that big unless you're doing, you know, stellar temperatures where you got millions of degrees. I don't think we're, it all depends. Build your database however you want, folks. This can be smaller like that. Now, these I want to all be the same size, so I'm going to highlight them all together and then resize one of them. And it should resize them all together to right about there. And then we can slide them over. And then we'll grab this one. And then we'll grab that. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. There we go. I always like to leave a little bit of room in here for a scroll bar. Bring that up. If you want to put totals down here, you can. If you want to do like the averages and stuff that I showed you in the original video, right, the F2C video. Put your, put your averages right down here. You want to get the average of each of these? That's great. Sum them all up. I don't know what you're adding up, but, you know, sum, average, max, min. Put them all down here. I got a whole separate video on form footer totals. All right. Save it. Close it. Open it back up again. And look at that. It's a thing of beauty. We can get rid of the main menu, too. All right. Look at that. Very nice. All right. 45 degrees Fahrenheit is 7.2 Celsius or 280 degrees Kelvin. And that's, that about fits my rule. Remember I told you in the original, in the F2C video, I said living in Buffalo, you always, if you have, if you, if you go up to Canada and you see Celsius, right, if it's seven degrees, you double it and you add 30. So it's 14 plus 30 is 44. That's about right. That, that rule works well for me. <laughs> if you like this kind of stuff, consider checking out my access expert courses. I know a lot of people want to skip over the expert classes and go straight to the developer stuff. But there's so much good stuff in the expert classes that doesn't require any programming, but it's really foundational 
for learning access. Things like the if function and working with DLOOKUP and that switch function I talked about, union queries. I go over all of the different functions in access, all of them. I got a whole series on string functions, logical functions, math, date, time, you name it. It's all in here. So check it out. If you're curious, if you have any questions, post a comment down below or send me an email. I'm always available. Um, I do have a rule for customer service questions or like what's covered in what class, you can always email me. If it's a technical question, those I insist you post either on my website in the forums or post in a comment because I get way too many of those to be able to help everybody individually. I wish I could, but there's just so many now. I know in some of my older videos when I first started doing tech help, I was like, yeah, email me your questions. I get too many of them now. I'm sorry. I wish I had more time. But I have a fantastic group of moderators on my website. There's like six, seven guys that they just they love helping people out. They do me a great job of, of, of helping me out. So if you have questions like that, technical stuff, post them on my website. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. That's going to conclude this series. Three parts. That's not bad. Uh, I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. 
Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.